Hello everybody, Andy here again. Well here we are out in the Sussex countryside again. Another one of my scenic walks. Um, I don't know if you can see in the distance there, I'll just pan in very slightly up there. One of the well-known sites of uh, the Sussex Downs, that is the Long Man of Wilmington. And today I'm going to be walking up the top of that hill, that's Windover Hill, and uh, just having a wander around there. I'm not going to go too far today, but I just thought I'd show you a bit more of the Sussex countryside and the Sussex Downs. Well here we are, a little bit closer, I don't know if you can see a little bit better, I'll pan in very very slightly just a bit more. Um, this is supposedly the largest human figure in the world, the Long Man of Wilmington. He is over 230 feet high and uh, you can't really tell that from this, but uh, I'll tell you, the hill here, I'll tell you a bit more about that Windover Hill in a minute, but it's actually part of the South Downs as I said. Uh, no one actually knows what he is and what he actually represents. There are lots and lots of different stories. He could be Roman, he could be a Norse god, a depiction of a Norse god. He could be something from like Stone Age man depicting someone walking. You can see the sort of staffs that he's holding in his hands there as well. Obviously they're even, they're even bigger, sort of 236 feet or something like that, I do believe. So he's a bit of an enigmatic figure. No one actually really knows who the long man is or who the long man was even. He's sort of depicted in maps and drawings from the sort of 1700s uh, in this part of the world. Um, but before he was like a grass cut figure and the grass used to stand out in the summer and he was called like the green man as well. And then uh, the Sussex Archaeological Trust actually sort of tidied the whole figure up and I'll, I'll show you a bit more about that in a minute and, uh, as I get a bit closer because there's a bit more detail to actually show you but uh, I'll keep on walking. Well here we are at the bottom of the Long Man. I'm actually looking back to the village of Wilmington and I say this is the Long Man of Wilmington and that is the village of Wilmington. Look at that lovely pretty little uh, Sussex village down and nestling in the South Downs. As you can see quite a very nice countryside right the way around here. This green, that's a reservoir over there in the distance and I'll give you a shot from up at the top of the hill but it's uh, one of those nice little villages and I must admit it's one of those places that if I ever won the lottery or whatever this is the sort of place I'd love to live in. Uh, I've always said that. I'll, I'll take, hopefully take you down to the church a bit later on because it's a, a lovely church and remains of like an old priory or something down there as well and one of the oldest yew trees uh, in Britain. It's over a thousand years old they do believe so I'll, hopefully I'll show you that later on but as I said if I ever won the lottery, this is where you'll probably find Andy Mooseman living in the future. It'd be lovely to look out of your bedroom window and there's the long man of Wilmington staring you straight in the face. And I'm sure a lot of you out there can understand exactly why that is. Well here I am right at the uh, feet of the long man. As I said the Sussex Archaeological Trust got to work on here in the, I think it was the 1800s. And uh, whether you can make out, if I pan in a bit there, you might be able to see that it's actually made up of um, blocks just so what they did is they put blocks in there to actually de to show the outline of the figure the long man himself and they, they periodically they like whitewash them <laughs> so it's not really chalk anymore uh, maybe i've dispelled a few myths there a lot of people think that's that's pure chalk it isn't unfortunately it's blocks that are put in there to actually outline the, the figure that was on the hill all those years ago hundreds thousands of years ago i'm going to carry on walking around the side of the hill up to the top and I'll show you a view from the top. Well, not that short, it's quite a long hill. <laughs> you might hear me puffing away in the background. Yeah, well, as you can see, I'm uh, gradually walking up the hill and as uh, you might be able to hear a bit of wind apart from my laboured breathing. Because, uh, as you can see, it's quite a, a steep climb. I'm still going up. Um, a bit more about the long man itself is the long man's just one of a, a series of uh, chalk figures that we've got on the, on the downs and in southern England generally. I'll try and cut in a couple of pictures of them. Um, one of the most famous is the White Horse at Uffington, which is um, in Berkshire, which is a number of miles from here. Um, another one, very famous one in Dorset, the Cern Abbas Giants. And uh, hopefully I'll show you a picture of him, if I can cut him in around about now. and you can find, see exactly why he is very famous. <laughs> um, it was said that uh, the tip of the, the phallus there was um, used as like a fertility rite and obviously you can see why people would go and lay on the tip, actually uh, uh, make love on the top of the tip <laughs> and that would supposedly bring you good luck and you can see exactly why that sort of story might have come about. But uh, So he's just a series. Why? 
most of these were erected, I don't, <laughs> erected, uh, I'm not really sure why they were cut into the hills, but uh, some of them are very old, as I said, we don't know the age of the long man. The one that's um, the Uffington White Horse is thought to be the oldest, um, but once again, without the archaeological evidence, no one can really tell. So they're all in southern England. We have a lot of stone circles and things like that in northern England, which is more Celtic, I suppose. But in southern England, we have the chalk figures. But anyway, I'm going to take a little break, I think, and I'll talk to you again when I get to the top of the hill, which hopefully isn't too far away now. I'm right up at the top of the hill, and I hope you can hear me, because it's pretty windy. As I said, this is uh, it's called Windover Hill for a very good reason. You can see that tree right in front of me. You can actually see the way that the wind, the prevailing wind currents, that's coming from the sort of southwest. And so you can tell from that 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 is the uh, usual way that the wind comes. And uh, so we're about five, six hundred feet above sea level here. We can see just behind the tree there. And if I come round, there's another one there. That sort of lump. These are actually ancient burial mounds, um, which suggests that this is a very important hill. Here we are, right at the top of the hill once again. Just a couple more of these sort of burial mounds behind me. I don't know if you can see them if I sort of pan around very slightly. As I said, the reason that this probably is uh, a very important place, along here, right the way between Eastbourne, as I said, which is not far behind me, and right over to uh, Hampshire, about a hundred or so miles the other way, uh, to the west, is the path called the South Downs Way. Now what we have in, in Britain are quite a few ancient trackways and that's one of them that was used by ancient man. And we also have what they call Beacon Hills and this obviously being sort of 600 feet high with the long man and with all these tumuli as they call them and barrows, burial mounds, it suggests that it was a very important place. A way mark if you want on that long walk that people used to use. They obviously used to use the hills because it was an easy way of finding their way about. And the trackways are thought to be thousands of years old used by ancient man to sort of work their way around. Obviously a lot of the South Downs hundreds of years ago was actually all wooded, woodland, but a lot of that has been cleared. We still have areas, there's an area just not very far from here called Friston Forest, although that has been partly, partly replanted. But um, it's like very important for sort of ancient history. I think they have done some archaeology up here, but I don't think anything particularly substantial has been found. But it does suggest that uh, usually the, the most important sort of tribesmen, head of the tribes, etc., were buried in these sort of very prominent places. Well, I'm standing right actually above the long man now. I don't know if you can see, you might be able to see right down below me. There's uh, quite a very steep hill. But uh, that's just about the end of this uh, short scenic walk. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I shall try and do a few more like this. Just a uh, quick runs out into the countryside. I've got another one in the pipeline as well, but several more. But uh, as I said before, one of my favourite spots, and one of the things I like about this, if you listen, you can't really hear anything at all. And that's what I like about this place. Just the birds. A bit of traffic maybe in the far distance, some sheep and cows and crows and things like that about, and the sound of my labour breathing when I'm climbing up the hills. But apart from that, I haven't seen a soul up here all the time I've been up here. A few people in the distance riding their horses, and that's what I like about this part of the world. So I hope you have a place like that as well. Anyway, thanks for that. I'll uh, see you very, very shortly, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. So this is the yew tree I was talking about which they think is over a thousand years old and uh, if you can see in the distance there's actually big poles holding it up it's quite an amazing tree actually I don't know if churchyards are traditionally associated with the uh, yew trees I'm not absolutely sure why but uh, so it's uh, a nice little churchyard a lot of rooks up in the trees up there so you can see them but, uh, pan around. I just thought I'd do quickly show you that so it's uh, a tree's at least a thousand years old or so it's thought anyway you know, that's enough for me. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.